Here's a new hopper pattern. It's really cool. I've been having people go to the river and check it out. It's called the Hoptimus Prime, named by Mrs. Chance Wilson. This is a cool fly. Um, we have another video for this one. This one's called the Twisted Foam Hopper. It's a pattern that's been around for a long, long time in, in Utah. This is kind of my version of it. You'll see, um, see how to put this one together in the other video. But I took that body technique and I started tweaking this. And this fly I took out, or, or I've, I've been passing it around, and uh, fish have really, really liked this one. So we're trying to think of a name. I was thinking of like soft serve hopper because the tail looks like soft serve ice cream. And then Briggs wife said Hoptimus Prime the other day, totally on accident. Um, so this one's called the Hoptimus Prime, and we're going to show you how to tie it. You can really use any hook you want, sometimes 2X. I just like the normal 1X long. This one's a little heavier wire. So you can use kind of anything that, that is gonna be a little bit heavier because there's a lot of foam on this. I'm gonna start out just dressing the, the hook with thread. Um, this is Semperfly 6 aught. You can use any 140 to near thread that you like and We'll just dress this down a little bit and then I like to kind of create a little bit of a rough um, wrapping with that thread so that it, it won't twist as much. Um, so we're going to keep doing that a little and tack it a little tiny bit with super glue. And bear with me, like there, there are quite a few steps to this one. Um, we, we've added and subtracted things to this fly quite a bit to make sure that it had all the right things and nothing that was that was extra. So, you know, a lot of the things will help it float better. Some make it sit better in the water, etc., etc. Okay, so the star of the show here is fettuccine foam. Fettuccine foam is just two millimeter foam that is cut thin so that they make two mil by two mil squares, just like that. So I'm going to take four of these and I'm going to cut them all flush like that and you can put them on any which way but I'm going to just take this and tie this in with actually I'm going to move them back a little bit about to here but I'm going to tie these in with the tan pieces on the bottom. I'm going to really wrap these down tight up in the front like this and then when I go back I'm going to do a few loose turns pushing my thread just a few more thread widths back. Um, there's going to be a lot of tension right here so if it's really tight these can just break off. Now I haven't done one of these bodies as I'm explaining so bear with me if this uh, if we have to redo this but um, it's important to keep the tension correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back and I'm going to take all four of these and just start twisting those up. And there's going to be a really tight tension point right here on the body. So once you have that pretty tight, I start coming down here and start wrapping this as if it's dubbing. So if you do that, it will thin it all out. And I know what you're thinking here, it's pushing all the air out of the foam and the fly won't float. Well, Guess what? It'll float just fine. So I'm going to come up here and I can take my fingers and kind of uh, make this so that it's all uniform. So you can see it's getting pretty smooth, um, nice and uniform. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a furled body. So right here in the middle of this, I'm going to grab it with these two fingers and it's all one motion. But when I pull this back like this, I'm going to rotate my fingers ever so slightly to start that furled body. So I'm going to show you with that. I go like this, twist it ever so slightly, keep good hold of this, and boom, we're in. So that makes that nice tapered hopper style body out of foam. So on the original, um, you would twist that up with your hands. Um, on this one, um, if you do it on the hook, you can get nice and tight and get a nice taper to the body, all right? So, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these fibers or these uh, fettuccine foams instead of cutting those off I'm just going to lift those up take my thread forward and I'm going to take the two tan pieces make sure they're laying nice and flat on the hook and I'm going to tie those in right behind the hook if you do it right they should splay out like little horns the other two you're just going to pull straight over the top kind of center those a little bit and now those are tied in. This is going to form the head and the legs of the fly. So there's very little waste of these fettuccine foam pieces. I think you can do about two flies per group. All right, so we started passing these around and we realized that the body sat maybe a little bit too low. And so what I did is I took a, a one mil piece of tan foam and I'm going to put this on the fly right over the body and I just cut it you know wide enough so it just kind of cover up the whole body now um, this foam has a lot of the air pushed out of it closer to the back so normal super glue sometimes doesn't work the greatest so I'm going to use some gel for this part. That's maybe a lot, but we're going to just jam it in there. We'll wrap, rub the extra super glue on Briggs' table. Now, if I push these together, but at the same time create a little bit of a bend on the body, that will create the most subtle kind of upsweeping body. And this piece of foam will keep that nice and, and tight right there. So. You can see how that tapers up. Now it also with these edges of the foam kind of makes it harder for that body to sink very far in the water. We'll trim that off. We're going to use a really cool wing material from Fulling Mill. It's called, what's it called? Ultra Dry Yarn. I've been using this stuff for a little while. I just couldn't remember what it was called. But anyway, this Ultra Dry Yarn, um, kind of similar to the old, uh, TMCO Aero Wing. It's really, really buoyant stuff. Um, and the dubbing we're going to use actually has some of this cut up into it. So we're going to just start this right here up closer to the head. This just makes a more um, uniform body. Wrap our thread back to where the wing's going to pop out. Fold the, the other one over. So as you can see, it's a rather thick wing. This is a hopper designed for you know rough water. It's going to be very buoyant and float like crazy. All right, so we're just going to come slightly past that foam wing. We're going to trim them, pick it out a little bit, trim it again if you if you want to, um, and then uh, that will sit back a little bit more once we get the the head all constructed. Okay, for the head, ultra dry dub. So this has some of this uh, ultra dry yarn mixed into a different, I think it's a little bit of a mix of synthetic and natural fibers. But this stuff floats really, really well. And the coolest thing is it, it gives your dry fly a buggy appearance. So if you're tying hoppers, stimulators, any of those things where you kind of want more of a buggy dub but that floats, this is the one. So I'm going to load up a pretty healthy dubbing noodle here. And uh, it's important when you get going is to try to mash up some right here, right against the eye. That will make these kind of bulb out more when you pull them back. So you need to create a, a little bit of shape to the head. If you don't create the shape with the dubbing, the, the foam will just kind of lay down really, really flat. And it won't give the hopper the, the good bulbous looking head that we're looking for. Okay, so you can see I have a pretty tight dubbed head. I mean, that, that's going to absorb less water than a loosely dubbed head. And I'm just going to take these two colored pieces of foam. Don't pull them back super tight. Kind of bulb them out a little bit. And we're going to use those to, to shape the head of this hopper. 
I'm actually going to look at that from straight up, straight on top. I'm going to kind of angle them to each side. Just like that. And then these tan pieces, I kind of bold them out even more to round out that head shape. All right, so now we have a really cool head shape, bottoms dubbing, super buggy, and now we got a big mess on our hands. So I'm going to come in and we're going to nuke these two first off. I'm going to yeet those out of there. All right, now these little flappers back here, I used to just cut these off, but then I realized we could do a leg kind of similar to the Project Hopper leg. So I started playing with that a little bit. What you're going to do is take some super glue and you're going to just dab that right along that wing. on both sides and the idea is you're going to want that leg to kind of kick up but stay close to the side of the body but not too close. I would never be a good like math or science teacher. Close but not too close. Close but not too close. Doesn't make any sense. Alright so I'm going to just kind of shape these up and so you want the legs to be going back over the hopper like that. And then you should be able to just grab them both, take your scissors and just, okay, get out of their wing. We'll take our scissors, push that wing out of the way and trim it about where the point of the tail starts, just like that. All right, we're getting closer. I need to brush this bad boy out. Brigham took the comb out of here because I kept combing my beard with it and I was breaking combs. So. My bad, guys. <clears throat> okay, now, maybe the coolest part of this fly. Um, I'm going to kind of try to kick this far one over a little bit. And it actually trimmed a little bit longer than the other, so I'll square them up. All right. We're going to put legs on this Project Hopper style. Oh, man. Before we do that, though, we're going to tie our head back in. You really don't need a lot of thread wraps to get this to stay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of round rubber. I'm going to poke a hole in this leg with a bodkin. And then we're going to push the rubber through, glue it, and it actually is way more durable than you'd think. But I came up with a hack. It's really hard to poke a hole and get the rubber leg to go through. In fact, I'll just show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is I, I have this Stonfo um, bodkin that I like a lot because the needle tapers all the way up. So I can just take that, poke it where I want the leg, and then push it through to try to open up a hole big enough to shove the rubber leg through. So the problem starts when you have a piece of rubber leg and it, it doesn't want to be pushed through because it's limp. So what I did, so I took a, a little tube of resin. I squished a little bit of resin to the very tip and then I would take the rubber leg, push it down in there, coat it very lightly, cure it with the light, and then you end up with a little rubber resin needle should poke right through there. See that? So you just pull that through. You can even do this and now the resin peels off of there and you just have the leg through there. Um, I need this hack for the project hopper too. So once the leg is in place, I am just going to tack that with a little bit of super glue. Wipe it off with your fingers, wipe it on Briggs' desk, and trim that leg off. I left a little tag end on there. Oh, that's too much. Just like that's fine. And I'll do that on the other side.
Okay, our legs are in place. I'm going to come behind the fly and we're going to say we want them about like that long. All right. So, another really cool thing I've been playing with, with, you know, hoppers and chubbies and all that kind of stuff, is I've been putting hot spots on the legs. Meaning I'm tying in kind of a, an extra set of legs that serve as nothing more but little hot spots. They're never going to fade out. They're not marker. Um, they add a little bit to the fly. So I'll show you how I do those. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of this same round rubber that we used for the back leg. And we're going to tie that into the gaps near the head. Standard hopper tying procedures. Now once it's in, I'm going to wiggle that around and get it so that it sits kind of right on this tan leg. Come on, cooperate, rubber legs. We're making a video here. Stupid hopper. No. We're good. So, as you can see, if I were to trim those, both of those rubber legs would just shoot directly out of there. I'll show you how to make that so it doesn't happen. Um, Those are in, and what I'm going to do now is take a piece of red round rubber, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to tie those, I'm trying to show you on the camera how to do it, I'm going to tie those directly underneath where I tied in the brown. And I'll just loop that over, doing the same technique. This is kind of an extra step. You don't have to do this, but um, we've tested this one here on maybe not very hoppery water, and it's done extremely well. And it is a little squirrely to get that set up. Anyway, almost done here. We're just going to cut that off now. And we'll tie in an indicator. We'll spread these legs out a little bit, trim them up, and we're almost done. We're going to use that same uh, ultra dry yarn, but in pink for the indicator. We'll tie that in right here. And uh, one really cool technique that kind of cleans up the fly, you can take a needle and come in here, pull that forward through that foam gap, it's like putting a bow tie in your in your puppy's hair. Brigham said he's going to do that when he gets a dog. I told him not to. Anyway, it kind of puffs out like that. And then uh, I like to just trim this equal to the length of the other wing. So we have a lot of bright surface area to see. And the final step, we're going to add some more of this dubbing in between all those legs. Looks like we got a tarantula in here with all these legs just poking out everywhere. Trust me. Another kind of thinner dubbing noodle. And we will just kind of jam that in between this tie down point, thicken that up, and it'll move those legs further out. Like I said, it will move it further out. That just means I need a little more dubbing. So they're not quite splayed the way I want. So I'll just keep putting more dubbing in that little gap and it should push them out and maybe a little bit thicker dubbing noodle this time. Just like that. So instead of whip finishing, I've got a bunch of stuff going on here. I'm just going to take super glue and just jam that in right here. That's right where my thread last touched. Well, it will be. Just like that. We're going to trim that off. And now we're going to 
doctor up these legs. So the back legs, the, the back red legs, should just be little slivers of, of red. And then the front should be even smaller than that. And then for the, the normal legs, I just push those all forward ever so gently, trim them all off, and then you can place the gap on this one. did get a little squirrely, but we can doctor it around and figure it out. But anyway, there you have it. Optimus Prime. This one has been smoking fish here on our local river. Give it a tie. Obviously, you can tie this in a bunch of different colors.